Yay, yay, hey everybody! Welcome, my little glip glops, to the next part of Who Are the Grey Knights. This time we're going to be talking about Deimos, the Steel Forge. The war needs of the Grey Knights call for a constant supply of ammunition and ordnance. Long ago, the chapter made an alliance with the Adeptus Mechanicus, and as part of their bargain, were gifted with the Forge world of Deimos. Formerly one of the moons of Mars, the planetoid was dragged across the system to hang in the sky above Titan. Its mass mined and converted until it was more star fort than celestial body. Now I'm just thinking about for a second. So they might. I always thought Deimos was a forge planet before it got to Titan, but that changes. You see, then it would make sense to tow it across the solar system to Titan and put it in orbit over there from Mars. But now, actually, with that little sentence, apparently Deimos was just a rock which they towed across the solar system to then build into a star fort over Titan. Begging the question, why? There weren't like a couple million other planetoid-sized rocks around Saturn or the asteroid belt or Jupiter or there in the general vicinity of space that if you desperately needed to tow it to, to Titan, you could just have used one of those? No, no. Somebody sat down and said, it has to be Deimos. Well, okay, fuck it. Sorry, that was just, I learned something new. Here we go. Ah, the tech priests and servitors of Deimos serve the Grey Knights alone. Crafting everything from bolters and bolt shells to storm ravens and land raiders. Only the Nemesis Force weaponry is created in the Citadel by the Grey Knights themselves. All other material is ferried down to Deimos in an endless stream of heavily guarded transports. Servitors oversee the packing and transportation of everything destined for Titan, loading consignments in utmost secrecy to ensure that no one, not even the Tech Magos of Deimos, know the extent of the Grey Knight's arsenal. The same servitors are then mind-wiped before their return to Deimos, lest the enemies of the Imperium were ever to dissect their shriveled brains. It's nice to know that servitor brains are shriveled. I, I, I thought they were could just, you know, like, whatever. Uh, I didn't know they had to be desiccated, but what? Okay, cool. Next! Broadsword Station. The sky above Titan glitters in the dark with dozens of orbital defense platforms, warships, and Vord fortresses. Amongst these vast drifting structures can be found Broadsword Station, birth of the Grey Knight's fleet, and launching point for the chapter's forays into the wider galaxy. Hanging in synchronous orbit above the fortress monastery, the station's huge macro batteries and torpedo arrays form the Grey Knight's first line of defense against attack. The guns of the station can even be angled down to point onto Titan should the unthinkable ever happen and the Citadel fall, or worse yet, its demonic prisoners escape their sorceress containment. At any one time, there are dozens of strike cruisers gathered around Broadsword Station, undergoing repairs or preparations for missions. The Grey Knight's alliance with the Adeptus Mechanicus, as well as their favored position alongside the Inquisition, ensures that their vessels are amongst the finest the Imperium can create, and few ships match them for speed. The station also acts as a training facility for those chapter serfs and specialist servitors destined to act as the crew on the Grey Knight's ancient ships. Unlike the lumbering battleships of the Imperial Navy, with their corridors and bilges packed with pressed-ganged ratings, ah, uh, 
That gives me flashbacks of wooden ships and iron men. Yes, that was an Avalon Hill reference. Get over it. But actually, I don't think people are uh, packed into bilges. Well, eh, maybe they do that in the Imperial Navy. Never mind. Press gang ratings. The vessels of the Grey Knights boast expert crewmen. Oh, really? Only expert? They couldn't get crack crewmen? <laughs> That's another inside joke. Look it up. <clears throat> The Grey Knights are also blessed with patronage of their own navigator house, of the Navis Nobilite. By the millennia-old accords of these navigators, guild the guide the chapter's ships through the warp, often enshrined on a vessel from birth to death in order to keep the secrets of where they have gone and what they have seen. So, to make that clear to you, Grey Knight navigators are born on their ships and die on their ships. They spend their entire time there, never getting off. So there is no chance to capture a Grey Knight Navigator and find out what the ship is doing or any type of fluff that you want to make about that. Forget about it. They're born and die on their ships. Yes. Until next time, I got a special series next time. And for all of you Grey Knight fanatics out there, we are going to go over the timeline of the Grey Knights. Yes, the last 10,000 years from founding to today, relatively speaking, in 4K, 40K, what the Grey Knights have done. Every major battle and uh, deed that they've accomplished. It's in the book. I'm going to read it. And at the end of it, if you watch all of that, you officially get the Grey Knight fanboy title that you can put under your name in any forum that will allow you to do so. Until then! Bye.